Hello folks. This video is in response to a subscriber who requested some more information on my solar controller battery box. First off, let me state I am not an expert, I am not an electrician. Everything I learned to put this box together I learned on the internet. Some may be right, some may be wrong. Use any information that I present here at your own risk and please verify to make sure it's correct. If you find something I've done wrong, I would appreciate it if you would send me a comment and show me the right way to do this. On that, we'll get into it and I'll kind of describe what I've put together here. So this is a Pelican case. It's a 1620 series that I purchased via eBay. Uh, the panel on the top is a acrylic sheet, quarter of an inch thick, that I also purchased on eBay. And I'll show you how it's mounted in there when I take the panel off. But before I take the panel off, we'll just go through a general overview of what the various components are and what makes up the box. So looking down on the box, you see that I have four vents on the top for venting. I also have vents on all the sides of the box. The batteries are contained inside here, so you do need to vent while you are charging. So you want to make sure that you're venting out any gases and dissipating the heat that is being thrown off by the batteries. Across the top, we have a DC distribution panel. This I also purchased from eBay. I could not find a supplier in the United States that made these. Basically, I have two cigarette lighter outlets here, a USB port here that is the 2.1 amps version so it can power an iPad. It has rocker switches for each of these outlets as well as a little fuse. And then it has a voltage meter on it so you can see how much power is being drawn into this distribution panel. My solar controller is a Solar Boost 3000i from Blue Sky Energy. I then have a Numar breaker panel. There are 30 amp breakers that are inside of here and I have three of them. I have an Anderson power pole connector that runs to my inverter. I have a couple of switches on the front and then I have some bulkhead terminals. This switch drives this Anderson connector. This switch drives these two bulkhead connectors. They are rated for different levels of power. The Anderson connector on this side has a 200 amp quick blow fuse protecting it. On this side I have a 100 amp quick blow fuse protecting it. So basic overview of how everything is wired up. First, on the side of the box, this is my power input plug from my solar panels. I fabricated my own cord, 50 feet. If I had to do this again, I probably would have just used a 30 amp generator cable. That would have been much easier than creating my own extension cable and hunting down these plugs. See, I have two vents on that side as well, but this is where power initially comes in. Back to the top of the box. Once power comes in, it goes to the 30 amp breaker panel, right here. After the 30 amp breaker panel, it goes to the solar controller. Coming out of the solar controller, it goes back to the 30 amp breaker panel to another breaker, and then it goes to the battery. Coming off of the battery, we go back to the 30 amp breaker panel and then from the 30 amp breaker panel to the DC distribution panel here. This actually has two levels of protection. It has the 30 amp breaker and then it also has a built in fuse. The switches at the bottom come right off of the battery. So they come from the battery to a 200 amp fuse that's behind this panel to the switch and then to the Anderson connection over here. Or in this switch's case, it goes to a 100 amp fuse and then it goes to these terminal posts over on this side of the box. Again, these terminal posts allow me to charge the battery as well as drive an inverter that's a little less power than the 1500 watt inverter that I have that normally connects up to this Anderson connector over here. So now I'm going to remove the panel, flip it over, and let you see how all the wiring is put together. Okay, here's the panel opened up. You can see major components are the batteries here, here are the quick flow fuses down here, here is power coming into the box from the solar panels. One of the things people may ask questions about is how did you mount that panel? How did you keep that acrylic panel up? If you notice there's some little mounting um, 
surfaces here. This is actually a, uh, a bulkhead mount for a Pelican case. I couldn't find one that was large enough for a 1620 case, but all you really need to do is have support in the corners and a little bit out. So I actually bought the panel mount for a 1400 series case, and then you notice I cut it and I have some gaps here. But that's okay because you notice I need some gaps for like the Anderson connector where it punches up through the acrylic. So all you really need is to have enough support to hold that panel and hold your devices. So when you look at the first path, you're seeing the positive lead come into the breakers panel here from the solar panel, then coming out and going to the solar controller. Negative lead is going directly to the solar controller. Coming out of the solar controller, we go back to the breakers with our positive cable. We take our negative over to the battery. We bring our positive back out of the breakers and go to our batteries. That is our charging loop. Also coming off of the solar controller is also a battery temperature sensor that comes over to the negative lead on the battery. So that's wired down and around. When we look at the power generation that's going out to our DC distribution panel up here, we're coming off of our battery, positive and negative. We are going into the breaker panel here. We are coming, the positive lead is going off and in to the distribution panel, and you can see the negative lead coming back to the batteries. Now notice the gauge thickness on these wires is thinner because it's only expected to handle 30 amps. My solar panels are rated for 30 amps. My charger is a 30 amp. DC distribution panel, really I should only be sending out about 15 amps to that, uh, but the wire is rated for up to 30. When you look at the additional wires in there, you'll notice they're getting a lot thicker here because this is the amperage that's being run across these wires. You need to make sure that your thickness of your cable is stepped up accordingly. And as you look in the description, I have a website that will automatically calculate that for you based on the distance that your cable is going to run and the amperage that you're going to draw. So first, for the Anderson connector here, you'll see that I come off the batteries and I go to my quick blow fuses down here. Um, again, you want to have your quick blow fuses within six inches of your positive battery terminal. I come out of the quick blow fuses, I go into the switch with the positive, and then over to the power connector. Again, negative just goes straight to the, to the connector. And you're seeing my cat, Chloe, who is now my electrician apprentice. Going over to my other power studs here on this side. Again, this is for less amperage, only 100 amps. Underneath this uh, fuse, there's another one underneath it that is rated for 100 amp quick blow fuse. And again, I take the positive. I'm trying to be within six inches of that positive terminal or as close as I can get. I come off the other side of the fuse with the positive, go to my switch, and from the switch, I go to the positive terminal. The negative just goes straight to its terminal over there. Again, wired by those, not such a great idea, but it, it droops down, so it really doesn't sit that close. It's just because the panel's flipped over. But this is basically how I wired up my solar controller battery box. If you have any questions, uh, please put them in the comments. Hopefully I answered the questions out there as to how this was actually put together inside. And if you're looking at putting one of these together, good luck. And again, verify this information. And if you find something that I'm doing wrong or that you think is dangerous, please let me know in the comments so that I can correct it. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe.